Chapter 5 Research Walking back up the cargo ramp of the ghost, Will says, Thoughts? Maxim hums. Well, the drop-off is in a remote swamp-like area on the second moon of Bray. We could set up an ambush. Luckily, it's here on Bray, so unlikely they'll be able to set up their own ambush in advance. If they're locals, they might know the terrain enough to know if we're set up in advance, Zephyr replies. As Gabe reaches over to close the inner cargo airlock, he offers, Perhaps we could. A-team, Will shouts, and then looks at Gabe. Sorry, buddy, go on. Gabe tilts his head. Never mind. Maxim and Zephyr exchange a glance. Then Maxim asks, What's an A-team? Will smiles and motions for the team to follow him. Easier to show you. As they head for the hatch leading to the crew lounge, Gabe's shoulder visibly slumps. Then he straightens as he follows the crew out of the hold. Forty minutes later, Benny turns to Will. That was awesome! Will beams. Right? Maxim leans forward, grinning. So what? We modify the yacht? That's exactly what we do, Zephyr says. Will, this is a great idea, this A-team of yours. They did this type of thing often? Once a week, usually. Gabe, who has been standing near the kitchenette area, chimes in. Captain, I believe this plan to be quite sufficient, provided the modifications to the yacht are such that outwardly it appears unchanged. It would provide an excellent platform to spring a trap from. Will points to Gabe. There we have it. Gabe says it's a good plan. Gabe tilts his head, looking at Will, but says nothing. Will's stomach makes a gurgling sound, causing everyone to look at him. Will smiles weakly. Benny goes straight to the comms terminal on the wall. I'll get my folks to send over the plans for the yacht. They can have it transferred wherever we want it as well. I would suggest somewhere not associated with your family, Gabe offers, in case they are being watched by the kidnappers. Benny nods. Good idea. Yeah. Hi, Mom. We need you to send over the schematics for the yacht you're going to give the kidnappers and then transfer the yacht to a spaceport we don't have any interest in. He pauses, listening. Yes, we know what we're doing. Another pause. If you must know, the plan is Captain Calder's. Yes, the human. No, he's quite clever sometimes. Benny glances over at Will. Well, yes, his race hasn't left the solar system yet, but... Yeah, it's a good plan, trust me. A pause. Okay, love you, Mom. Say hi to Dad. Will scowls. You know, it's a little insulting and a bit racist that your parents think I'm some type of trained pet or something. Benny shrugs. Sorry, they tend to look down on anyone that's not Braylac. They didn't look down on Max or Z, Will counters. They're peacekeepers. Ex-peacekeepers, Maxim corrects. Benny waves the comment off. No one messes with peacekeepers. But don't worry, my folks think Max and Z are just as dumb as you are. He looks at all three faces, staring back at him. No offense. Will gets up and starts for the hatch leading to the bridge. So, where are we meeting the yacht? I'll get us underway. I sent the coordinates to your station on the bridge. Need help to get us there? Benny asks. I'm fine. Remember... I used to fly this ship solo for a long time before you all came aboard. Will turns, and the hatch closes behind him. Wasn't he also in a huge depression funk and nearly drinking himself to death? Zephyr asks, staring at the hatch. Benny nods. Oh yeah, you should have seen him back then. Not pretty. Not that he's pretty now. That's not what I'm saying. I mean, he's okay, but never mind. Benny heads off quickly towards the crew quarters. Maxim watches Benny leave. Then he looks at Zephyr. Uh, that was weird. She nods. No argument. She turns to Gabe. Grab a seat. I want to watch another episode of A-Team. See if we can get some pointers. They're clearly experts. Gabe walks over and sits down carefully on the sofa beside Maxim. Thank you. I concur. More research is warranted if we are to accomplish our goals. Maxim smiles then presses a button on the control unit for the vid screen on the wall. A voice announces, Ten years ago, a crack commando unit...
epic build montage. You know, I've only ever seen one other space yacht, Will says, running his hand along the hull of the sleek craft, parked in an unused spaceport outside Barrage. Zarix has one. Looks a lot like this one, actually. Only, you know, normal-sized. He had let me tag along once. He was having some big party for a GC council member or something. Benny looks at him. Normal size? Maxim turns too. Why do you keep calling it a space shot? He asks, as Zephyr says. Sarix entertained GC council members? Will shrugged. I don't know. I mean, it's a yacht for space. He looks around. Is it that what you call it? Benny, fuming, asks again. Normal sized? Zephyr laughs. No, we call them yachts. The same as we don't call starships spaceships. But they're in space, Will offers. Your world has yachts, right? Do you call them sea yachts? Will blushes. Well, no, they're just yachts. And ships. They're just ships, not sea ships. Your pod thing wasn't a space pod, just a pod. Benny raises his hand and turns to walk away, mumbling something. Well, same thing, Zephyr explains. Drop the space part. Will turns to follow Benny down the lower hatch in the yacht hull. You guys could have said something sooner, he grumbles. Maxim and Zephyr exchange a glance as they follow him onto the ship, Gabe in tow. They all duck to get through a hatch that only comes to chest height. As the crew gathers in the main lounge, sitting on chairs much too small for them, Will gestures to several large windows. Okay, first things first. Those windows. Drop down armor plating. Maxim finishes. Will nods. And we'll need to... Add reinforcement to the maneuvering thrusters, Zephyr says. Will beams. Guess you all don't need me. How many episodes did you watch anyway? Benny, who's been looking in a crawl space under a Braylax-sized wet bar, says, Enough to get the idea. He crawls inside and points to something. We can slice a few blasters in right here. Mount them to those larger pitcher windows, Zephyr adds. Will nods to Gabe. Come on, big guy. Let's go to the bridge and see what we've got to work with. Gabe inclines his head. Of course, Captain. As they leave, Zephyr turns to Benny. Get started on the splices. We'll get started on the armor plating and blaster mounts. On it, Benny says, dragging high-gauge power cable into the crawl space with him. Maxim, meanwhile, grabs some type of fruit from a bowl sitting on an end table and goes outside to get the sheeting. Zephyr grabs a fistful of likely very expensive window coverings and rips them away from the wall. Benny pops his head out of the crawl space he's in. So, how are things with you and strong and silent? Zephyr eyes the small hacker his green head sticking out from the glowing hole he's in. Why, you have designs on him? She raises an eyebrow. A small green hand emerges and tilts back and forth. He's not my type, too tall. Benny winks, then dips back into the crawl space, shouting behind him. I will need power conduit soon. I'm almost done in here. Maxim walks back in with two large sheets of metal under one arm, a roll of high conductive power conduit under the other. Seeing the bemused look on Zephyr's face, he stops. What's going on? She glances at the crawl space. Nothing. Hand Benny the conduit, then help me. Did you bring hinges? Leaning down, he tosses the coil conduit into the hole. Of course. From inside the hole, they hear a yelp. As Maxim lifts the heavy metal plate in place, Zephyr uses a small welder from the ghost's engineering space to attach it to the hinge and the hinge to the bulkhead. Once the weld is cooled a bit, Maxim tests the hinge. Good enough, yeah? It's not like anyone will be inspecting it, she smiles. Gabe re-enters, a heavy blaster under one arm. I will be in the bow stateroom. He looks at the armor plate that Zephyr and Maxim are working with. That weld is acceptable. Let's meet our kidnappers. When the modifications are complete, the yacht outwardly looks no different. But on the inside, it's closer to the small frigate than personal pleasure craft. Will looks around at the crew of the Ghost, now temporarily, the crew of the glorious Gabber. Ready? Zephyr nods. Let's do this. The modifications seem adequate for your plan, Gabe says. I believe we are as ready as we're likely to get. He raises a hand, an index finger pointing up. We are also almost out of time. 
the kidnapper's deadline expires tomorrow. It will take us ten talks to get to the rendezvous location. Maxim turns and heads up the ramp. Then let's get moving. Benny turns and follows the massive ex-peacekeeper. Will looks up at the yacht. Eat your heart out, Hannibal and B.A. Walking up the ramp, he slaps the control that closes the outer airlock door, raising the gilded ramp behind him. Inside the small bridge, he looks at the central command station, its chair not looking like it could accommodate Will. Benny, that looks more you-sized. You want to take point? It's your sister, after all. Benny hops into the chair, squirming a bit to get comfortable. I could get used to this. Well, don't, Will says, heading back toward the main parlor, which has more human-friendly dimensions. Sensors are picking up a mid-sized freighter down there. Must be our bad guys, Zephyr says from the small sensor station on the bridge of the Braylack yacht. They have been flying for just over nine talks, the second moon of Bray visible in their screens. Benny looks over from the captain's chair. Okay, bring us down. Zephyr looks at the Braylack, sitting regally in place. Get your green ass out of that chair and you do it. You know how hard it is to get out of this tiny station. Benny tuts, but hops out of the chair. No respect. None, the Pelorian woman hisses, moving to activate her wrist comm. We're setting down in a few syntax. Be ready. She wriggles free of the sensor station and crouches over the bridge exit. You can set this thing down, right? If Will can do it, of course I can, Benny retorts dismissively. As she leaves the bridge, the ship jolts to one side, causing her to stumble against the wall. Krebneck, she mutters, taking the short ramp from the bridge to the main parlor. Ready? Maxim nods. Yes, Gabe has finished the last of the modifications. Gabe nods. I believe the plan is sound. The modifications, while not to my usual standard, are sufficient for this operation. He stands as much as he can with the low ceilings and makes his way carefully to the ramp down to the cargo hold. I will get the ransom ready. Zephyr looks around the room. Where's Will? Maxim gestures towards a hatch, just as it slides open. Will comes out, bent at the waist. A second later, Maxim wretches and turns away. Close the door. Oh, gods, Zephyr says, reaching for her nose. Will palms the control panel. The hatch closes behind him. I don't think Braylack food is compatible with human physiology, Will says quietly. Zephyr makes a gagging noise. You think? My gods, are you okay? She gestures back to the hatch. I mean, jeez. The ship lurches, then thumps, making contact with the ground of the moon. Will waves his hand weakly. Yeah, probably. Let's go. The four of them make their way toward the hatch to the small cargo hold, where the crate full of credits is secured, giving the hatch to the small restroom a wide berth. Maxim looks over his shoulder to Zephyr. I don't like this part. She nods. If everything goes according to plan, it won't be too long of a wait. I love it when a plan comes together. The main cargo ramp lowers and Benny walks out. I don't see anyone. He mumbles into the comm stuck in his ear hole. He reaches up to scratch at the small device. This thing itches. Would you rather the kidnappers see your wrist comm and cut off your arm? Will asks. Benny gasps. They wouldn't. Worth the risk? Benny drops his hand to his side and walks down the ramp toward the unnamed freighter sitting a few hundred meters away. Will glances at Gabe. You good with this? Gabe smiles, something his old body couldn't do. It is still strange for Will to see. Of course, Captain. He reaches over and confirms the status of the crate systems. Here they come, Benny reports. Will peeks around the edge of the cargo hold door. The hell? He exclaims. Further downrange, Benny jumps slightly at the outburst. What's wrong? Zephyr asks from her hiding place. It's a fucking bear spider thing, three of them. Will makes a high-pitched sound, like the, the top of a bear, but with a huge spider body, legs and all. Zalorians? Maxim asks. Maybe, Zephyr replies. What's a bear, or a spider for that matter? They're Zalorians, Benny says, through gritted teeth. Please shut up now. Zalorians are carnivores, Zephyr whispers to Will. 
They've been rumored to eat sentience from systems near their home star, just beyond the edge of the GC. Eat them? Will hisses. Well, before the Braylac entered the GC, they fought with the Zlorians almost constantly. I've heard Zlorians found them to be quite delicious. The lead Zlorian has stopped in front of Benny. Its long spider-like limbs lower it so that it's only half a meter over him. You have the money? It looks over Benny to the yacht beyond. That is a nice ship. Benny looks up at the snarling bear-like face. It's on the ship. Where's my sister? She's on our ship. Well, Benny asks, trying his best not to shake. The first Zalorian snarls, two of his legs twitching, making a clicking sound against the rock. We require proof. We're not stupid. Okay, those two can board and inspect the payment, but... He is stammering, Will notices. But it stays aboard the yacht. You seem nervous, tiny morsel. The Zalorian chuckles, its large incisor teeth dripping with saliva. It gestures to its companions, who march off toward the yacht, their legs clicking on the rocks as they walk. Nervous? Benny croaks, adjusting his collar. What? No, you're nervous. Why would I be nervous? The lead Zalorian asks, squinting at Benny, bearing its large incisors in the process. Here they come, Will says scampering back out of the small cargo hold up the ramp toward the parlor, closing the hatch behind him. Welcome, Gabe says from next to the cargo crate. I am GB. We don't care, snarls what might be a female Zalorian, based on the pieces of fabric hanging off the creature's massive, furry-topped half. It pulls a scanner out of its pouch, attached to its spider-like torso. Very well, then, Gabe says, taking a step away from the crate. What are you? The second Zalorian starts to ask, when the crate's lid explodes upward. Its sides fall away to expose two armored peacekeepers, pulse rifles in hand, infiltration armor fully powered up. What is happening? The lead Zalorian asks, turning to face Benny, or at least where Benny was a second ago. He's already running as fast as he can toward the yacht. Why, you little? The Zalorian roars rearing back on its multi-jointed spider legs before charging after Benny. Maxim and Zephyr make quick work of their targets, each now sporting a few new holes in their bodies, all smoking. We're clear down here, Zephyr says, kicking one of the dead Zalorians out of the hold. The yacht rumbles underfoot, slowly lifting off the ground. Will is crammed in the pilot station, powering it up and bringing it around. On the main screen, he can see the lead Zalorian almost on top of Benny. He reaches over to a control that is clearly not part of the original equipment. Wires trail out of the underside, snaking into the deck plating below. Here goes nothing. Benny down, he shouts into his comms. A low rumbling comes from, well, Will isn't exactly sure, but it's rumbling a lot. From down in the parlor, he hears things slamming into place. On one of the subscreens, he can see the large blaster cannons they've mounted on the bow moving into position, as well as the two medium-sized blasters mounted behind the lounge picture windows. Oh yeah, he shouts. What used to be the Ford luxury stateroom is now an opening hatch to reveal a rather sizable starship ion cannon. Shoot it, Benny screams. On the screen, the Zalorian has stopped, tilting its abdomen toward Benny. A thick stream of something white shoots out of the creature, smacking into Benny, driving him to the ground. Jesus Christ, Will shouts. What's wrong? Zephyr asks, leaning out of the cargo hold, trying to shoot at several new Zlorian, who have poured out of their ship. It's just, well, it webbed him. From the comms unit, they hear only, Oof, growler. Benny? Will asks. Shit, they're bringing their ship online. It's armed. Zephyr, Max, take out their leader. On it, Maxim says. On the screen, Will sees the two ex-peacekeepers leap from the cargo hold, thrusters in their suits slowing their descent. Will reaches over to another new control and targets the Zalorian freighter, which is now showing several blaster emplacements. Eat ion cannon, he tells them.